Hello and welcome back to LCA TV. My name is James Bromberger. Joining me on the couch here is Mr. Michael Davies. G'day. And with us also now is uh, Matthew Wilcox. Good afternoon, Matthew. Good afternoon. Welcome to day two now of LCA uh, 2410 in Perth. How are you finding the conference so far? I'm loving it. You know, I've, I, this is my 11th Linux Conf AU. Um, <laughs> I've spoken at 10 of them. Well, I will have spoken at 10 of them by the end by of the afternoon. Day, yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I love it. This is my favourite Linux conference. Hey, me, you're based out of the UK, aren't you? No, I'm no? from the UK originally, but I actually live in Canada, which Canada. is even harder to get to from here. It so it's was, quite an effort. It was a 40-hour plane journey to get no. there. 40? Yes. No. yes, it was. It, wow. it was Ottawa to Vancouver, an eight-hour layover in Vancouver, Vancouver to Auckland, a six-hour layover in Auckland, and then wow. Auckland to Perth. Wow. I'm just grateful I didn't have to go through Toronto. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just glad you didn't have to go through LAX on the way through, too. That's true. I mean, I could have been quite heavily delayed. I, I, I guess our, our uh, viewers will know that there was a uh, lot of uh, delays in the US uh, coming through. Yeah. The snow vortex that's going through. Absolutely, yeah. Quite impressive. Yeah. In Canada, we're used to that kind of thing, and uh, <laughs> it hasn't been too bad at all. Uh, touch wood, because my wife's flying down to join me in uh, just uh, about 10 hours from now. Excellent. She's, she's getting on a plane, she'll be here in two days. So, yes, so you just. Uh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I was going to jump. Like you said, this is your 11th LCA. My 11th. I, I, what was I, your first one? Sydney. 2002? 2001. 2001. 2001. 2002 was, was Brisbane, uh, Brisbane yeah. and then I missed the other Brisbane as well. I, right. I missed both Brisbane's and I missed Ballarat. So. Were you here with us last time then in 03? I was here in 03, wow. yes. I have the t-shirt, or rather I had the t-shirts. I've, um, I've, I've actually donated a number of my t-shirts to the uh, to, to, to the organisers, uh, hoping to raise some money for charity somehow, uh, perhaps Fantastic. auction or raffle them somewhere. Uh, but yeah, that will include a 2003 t-shirt. Wow. Wow, a long time. Now tell us, what have you been hacking on? What have you been working on? Well, most recently, most of what I've been doing, I, I've, I've got very, very inspired by the, by my job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fortunate. I, I know, it, it, it's, it's amazing, the synchronicity that happens here. Are you but, getting sick of yak shaving or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the yak shaving that's fun. Um, no, it, it's... Um, I, 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 about a week before Christmas, I got hugely inspired by some of the stuff that I was working on, and I, I've been putting in like 10, 12 hour days hacking wow. on this stuff because I've, I've just been, it's, it's all started to come together for me. I, I, I described, um, I, 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 you know, I'll do, I've been working on some of this stuff for like six, eight months and, you know, I've been, I've been kind of feeling my way towards a solution and all of a sudden, like a week ago, uh, well, about a month ago, it came to me and like, this is how to do it, this is how to do it. And, and the code started getting simpler and simpler and it got easier and easier to do. And it was all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this is it. And, and one, I was showing this to someone, they said, it's the platonic ideal of the code yeah. that you've been looking for. And I said, exactly, that's it. That, that, that's how to describe it. It's I like, think it's an amazing time when you can sort of have a dream of code. You know how yes. your functions need to lie out. You yeah. know what code you need to put down. Right. Then you just have to get it out of here and into here as quickly as possible. That's right. And, 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 and it's typing speed at that point. <laughs> <laughs> And running the compiler, like the, yeah. <laughs> once, once, once you've got that going, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great. So for those that don't know, whereabouts are you working? Oh, I, I work for Intel. I've, yep. been, I've been with Intel about seven years now. Um, I primarily work on storage. I'm, I'm a Linux kernel hacker. Yep. Um, so I have been working for about um, four or five years on NVM Express, mm -hmm. which is a standard for talking to uh, PCI Express cards yep. um, that, that have storage on them. So, I mean, there's, there's a number of um, there's a number of vendors who put out proprietary interface cards, and the major OEMs, people who, who would buy those, would say, well, you know, we, we, we want we want to put cards from vendor A, vendor B, and vendor C in machines. We don't really want to have to have validate three different drivers mm. for them. Right. We want them all to work together. So, what we need is a common standard. So, there was a real push from the OEMs and obviously um, Intel we also make um, SSDs we were quite happy to facilitate uh, the, the, that kind of uh, yes. work to uh, come up with a single standard that we could all implement yes. um, and uh, be, be, being a kernel hacker I wrote the, the Linux driver for it um, as well as helping uh, develop the spec um, large chunks of the spec are in fact my fault. Um, I, I may not have written them down, but I, I, I did some of the preliminary investigation on a whole bunch of them. And this, this is actually why I wasn't here in, for, for, for Brisbane or Ballarat. I, w I was really head down working on this spec. And I mean, yeah, it really did take a couple of years to get, get together. Yes. And during that time, it wasn't public. Mm. So we 
th there was nothing for me to talk about. I couldn't come to this conference and say, hey, here's this cool stuff I'm working on, because it wasn't public. So um, sometimes you have to take take the time to come up with something that's uh, uh, more uh, that, that's that's going to be worth talking about. Mm. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, you know, typically things in the open source world uh, happen very quickly. But yes. sometimes for some of these things, as you say, you know, we have uh, specs that need to be written for interoperability, and they do take time. Absolutely. And sometimes these things do have to do stay behind closed doors, and then they come out in the open, and then we have this big, you know, <laughs> mad push. But uh, it's good that you can be involved uh, from an open source perspective in the definition of these standards mm. up front to make sure that it's not going to be this 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 crazy world when we're trying to inter trying to make these devices Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, the, the the very day that we published the specification, I also published the Linux driver because I've been working on it for two, three years already at that point, uh, behind closed doors. Um, we, I, I even, um, I, I even backported a bit of the Git history, so that you know, the, the specification changed its name three times in in the last three months okay. as as the lawyers were coming, were, were going, and the the PR people were going through saying, yes, you can call it this, no, you can't call it that, you can't call it that, you know. Um, um, it's, it's fast. I mean, th those guys have a hard job. Absolutely. You know, they're not trying to make our lives hard. No. They're just they're, they're trying to protect us. Right? So I, I don't I don't feel bad about it. But it does it did make the Git repository look a little bit messy when he, when you know you rename the driver three times. So yes. I yes. went and I backported like three months worth of history from the Git repo and published that as saying you know let's pretend that was the start when I started working on the driver. But if you look at the copyright on it, you know it says 2009, which is about when I started on it. So and I, I've actually got a private Git repo that goes back to 2008. <clears throat> But um, yeah, it's 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 been a fun ride working on that. Now my, my next project, the the, one, the other thing that's inspiring me, is we're actually being um, open about uh, much earlier on, which is why I haven't had this huge gap. And I mean, not only because I could talk about NVM Express in the meantime, but also um, because. NV DIMMs already exist. You, you can go out and buy a piece of non-volatile memory today. Um, but you know what, what 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 Intel is seeing is a demand from uh, customers from from the rest of industry for um, non-volatile memory. Yep. So. Um, you know, today you, 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 you pull the power and, and your memory goes away. Well, what, what if it didn't? Yes. Uh, mm. And people are implementing this today. Uh, a, a, a colleague of mine likes to call them boutique solutions. So for very special purpose things like um, a RAM cache in a, in, in a file server or um, right. something in a router right. perhaps, mm. you, know, you want to keep your routing tables alive while you just power cycle the router. Sure. So you, you can store special purpose stuff in these uh, DIMMs, in, in these non volatile DIMMs that perhaps have uh, a battery on them to keep them alive. So you can actually go out and buy those today. They're on the market. Um, what size capacities are they, roughly? They're fairly small at this point. They're, they're in the uh, perhaps uh, four to 16 gigabyte capacity. Okay. And, and they'll come generally as a stick of DRAM that, that you plug into a slot. And there's all kinds of special purpose code you, you have to write to say, OK, so w w which memory addresses did that DIM get assigned yes. uh, by, by the BIOS? So they're, they're quite hard to use. You've got to try. And, and obviously, um, none of us likes hardware that's hard to use. <laughs> uh, that, that tends to limit its adoption somewhat. Um, so. We're, we're working on, in all kinds of different areas to make this stuff easier to use. Mm. And uh, being a Linux kernel guy, obviously I'm, I'm working on you know, how, how do we have the kernel use this part. Mm. But we've also got people working you know, with, with the BIOS vendors and, and with um, the other hardware vendors to kind of define standards around the stuff and just make sure we've got interoperability and yes. everything gets easier and easier to use. Um, so I'm, I'm actually be, be, I've been working with the file system people a lot. So I, I, I've just had um, two or three days of constructive uh, chats with Dave Chinner of yes. uh, XFS fame, and uh, I kind of hope you're going to get a chance to interview him later if you haven't already. Yeah, I, I caught his talk the other day, and it was brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We'll have to yeah. get him on the couch. We will. Yes, yes, will. I, I would recommend that. Um, yeah, and you know, so we're going to have support. Um, so. Uh, EXT2, the, the second extended file system, um, yep. already has support written in 2005 for okay. um, talking directly to, to memory. Yes. And uh, we, we're looking at porting that support forward to EXT4, mm -hmm. and I was just talking to Dave Chinner about what it's going to take to also port it forward to XFS. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's actually turned into a complete rewrite of all the code that came from 2005. <laughs> uh, the, the, there's not a single line of their code left, unfortunately, which is rather a shame because you know they, they put a whole bunch of work in. And, mm. I mean, it, it solved their problem for the time, right? It, it just turns out that 
with the way that file systems have evolved and the way that the rest of the kernels evolved, um, the way they did it just doesn't really work anymore. And and we, in, in order to fix some races, uh, we needed to just rewrite the entire thing, which wasn't how I had intended to spend the time between Christmas and New Year. But, um, it turned out to be. A nice well, distraction? Well, you know, <laughs> an I, achievement. I, 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 yes, yeah. yes. I, I didn't actually book time off between Christmas and New Year. It's just there's, there's nobody else in the office. So, uh, it's a good time. I, it's it a is. Good time the phone stops ringing. And, yeah. The phone stops ringing. We've got no meetings to go to. You know, it's, 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 it's a great time to, uh, to get some code written. Yes. Another good time to get code written is on the plane on the way down here. Yes. Uh, the only thing is that all of your online archives that you're trying to look up of uh, previous messages, unless you've got them with you, Git is a great source control tool because you've got your entire history with you. It's not like CVS where you had to go off to the server right. and say, what's right. the history of that file? But you've got it all with you. So right. um, from that point, <laughs> disconnected mode is awesome and, <laughs> and, and I, I do love Git. Um, but uh, I, there's, there, there, there's, there's some code I wrote on the plane on the way down here that um, Again, I was talking about the, the kind of crystallization, the platonic ideal. Of it. It, it, it all came together for me finally, and um, I'm going to be talking about it in my talk. I don't, I don't want to. Yes. I don't want to spill the beans because this, this is this is brand new code. I have tested it against the. I think the tablet would if you want to touch that. There, there may yeah, be no, I, no, no. I've, I've actually I've, I've, I've run XFS tests against it. I mean, good. It, okay. it, it didn't crash my machine. Okay. I think it's actually good quality code, and we kind of we, we, we did do some good testing on earlier versions of the code. Um, but the, the, this, this, this kind of crystallized into um, something, something very fun, and I, I think oh. for, for, for people in the storage world, I, I think it's going to be, they're either going to hate it or they're going to love it. Mm. Um, but, but they're going to have to come along to your gonna, talk to see this surprise. People who come along to my talk are going to hear about it first. Yeah. I will post the code tomorrow, all of the code. Oh. Um, but if you're I, on the inside track, if you're on the inside you scoop, need to be, be there. there. What time? 4.35. 4.35. Today, which is Thursday. Which room are you in? I am in uh, LT1, the Engineering Lecture, Lecture Theatre 1. one. Okay. Right, yeah. okay. So those on the stream can, can tune into that at the appropriate time. Yeah. And they'll be able to um, listen at the same time and ask questions on IRC. There may be somebody in the room monitoring IRC potentially who will be able to well, relay that, questions. That would be good. I'll, I'll, I'll ask somebody to do that. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm, I'm all for... Uh, Helping out the people on the uh, on the, on the live stream. Um, if if um, if anyone was watching the Colonel Mini Conf on Tuesday that I organised, uh, the uh, <laughs> the the format wasn't really conducive to live stream. It, it was it was very collaborative, a, a very discussion oriented kind sure, of thing. So sure. we didn't really want to slow down by forcing microphones to be passed around. So yes. the, the audio from that is probably not usable. I haven't gone to see what it's like yet, but. Um, yeah, we're actually trying out a completely new thing, well, completely new, a new thing for LCA as far as I'm concerned, which is running a mini-conf as an unconference. Yeah. So we, we had no uh, prepared topics going in. Um, the attendees in the room on the day decided what we wanted to talk about. We figured out whether we had the right people in the room to talk about mm -hmm. some of stuff. And actually we went off and got a couple of people who uh, we knew were at the conference <laughs> but hadn't chosen to come along to the mini-conf. We got them to come along later. And, we and, have and cookies. Talk. We had cookies. Well, yes. actually we didn't have cookies. We should have. Just we, tell we, them. We should have bribed them cookies. But it's an interesting thing though, isn't it? It's, mm. I mean, it's great that at LCA we can experiment with the format a little bit to, to meet yes. the community's needs. We're not, we're not yes. fixed and firm, farm, fixed and farm, fixed and, fixed and firm. firm, that's the word firm. we're for. Uh, and just in the format is we're prepared to play around with things. I mean, yeah. in the OpenStack community, we had our OpenStack mini conference, we had all these talks, but now straight after the conference, we've got uh, an ATC meetup, our active technical contributors, and mm. we're gonna meet for two days and, and basically do a two day sprint. Yeah, nice. So that's a, another way of doing it. And uh, mm. it's great that all the communities can come together at LCA and get some work done, as well as you know share that information and evangelize our projects and all that kind of so thing. So you're doing the ATC here in Perth after yeah. the conference directly? Nice. Yes, yeah. here on nice. campus and uh, for, for a couple of days after. And that was always the idea, I think, of the mini conference when we started them in 2002, which was to, to bring birds of a feather together as a longer session, as right. a potentially structured or unstructured, mm. but at least if everyone's coming to the conference anyway, because there's such a broad wealth of, of presentations right. at LCA, that sometimes, I mean, uh, with the, the Debian conference we had in 2002, it was a, an opportunity to get together and just yes. talk about one subject, focus, make some decisions, maybe cut some code, yep. Um, yep. and move on with it before we go to presentations. But we've conference. seen that right across, you know, we've yeah. seen that, uh, you know, in the graphics community and, mm. and all that sort of stuff, there's just... The Arduino what? stuff that we talked about with Jono yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's really good to see. Brilliant. Yeah. So I've got one more question for you. Mm, yeah. Now, um, you've been coming for a while now, which we've talked about already, but uh, you've got involved in the, uh, the running boff. 
Mm, yes, yes. You're, yes. You're, you're a constant uh, attendee <laughs> at the running bot, aren't you now? I, I, I am. So I, I actually took up running um, about uh, three or four years ago now, and um, I clearly quite enjoy it. It's, uh, it's been good for me. I've, I've shed a few pounds, um, and uh, it's, it, it, it's a lot of fun. So we, just to evangelize the running bot for yeah, that, yeah, yeah, we, uh, uh, we, we, we set up every morning at 6 a.m., which sounds horrendous because you know you've got to get up at five something in order to be there for six um, but honestly a lot of people are traveling anyway so they're dealing with the jet lag and you know if, if you're going to be waking up at 4 30 then you know get getting, get might, as well get up. You might as well get up and write some code of course but you know well, if you want to have time to think about code running is a great time absolutely mm, about great code. distraction I, I i do it all the time um, is it just for the elite runners like yourself absolutely not no we um it, it depends who shows up, you know, what, what kind of pace we do, and we'll do different things on, on different days. So we've we've done we've done runs over to Kings Park uh, mm -hmm. through through Kings Park. We, we yes. meet out the back of uh, St George. Yes. Um, it's like four or five k to the top of Jacob's Ladder. You did Jacob's Ladder. We did, you? did Jacob's Ladder. That's quite a quite let, a challenge, isn't let it? Let me tell people? you, my IT bands were not happy with me. <laughs> uh, still not happy with right. me, in fact. Um, but there, there, there are options, right? I mean, nobody was forced to go and do Jacob's Ladder. We all cho cho chose to go and do it once, and then said, "Okay, that's enough of that." Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know, if somebody just wanted to do it twice. They could have done that, yes, right? And the, you know, there's, there, there's, the, we always have kinds of options. So, uh, for example, the other day we went along the waterfront. Yes. And some of us did um, interval repeats out and back. So we, we'd, we'd sprint to some landmark, turn around, and jog slowly back, catch up to the rest and of the join group, the main group. And join the main group. Yeah. So was that the brewery or the Narrows Bridge you went to, or beyond? Um, we we went. We actually went beyond the Narrows. Uh, we were looking for the bell tower. For? Uh, I think we were looking for the base of Jacob's Ladder. We were seeing ah. if, if, if there was a way to get up it there. We couldn't find a way oh. in. It's set so, back quite a bit the other yeah, side. Yeah, and there's rides. actually construction nearby, so I, I think that threw us a little bit. Yes. Um, but we end up going through, there's a really nice little park uh, just in front of Jacob's Ladder. Yes, there is. Um, yeah. And so we ran around that, and that was beautiful. I mean, there's, there's some great scenery here in yeah. Perth. Uh, King's Park, of course. Everyone knows King's Park is glorious, um, and we tend to go through King's Park most days. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll set out at really whatever pace the group wants to go at. So you know, we might be doing six minute kilometers, we might be doing four and a half minute kilometers, we might be doing 10 minute kilometers. We'll, we'll, we'll see what people want to do at the day and we'll adapt accordingly. Nice. And maybe we'll split into two groups, right? And maybe some people end up running alone for a little bit, but you know, if we didn't have a running buff, you'd be running by yourself anyway, right? Indeed, so, yeah. Indeed. you know, you haven't. Uh, and so uh, tomorrow's gonna be the last uh, installment of the running buff? I believe so, yes, because Saturday morning is uh, park run so uh, so some of the running buff people will be heading out to the park run but huh. i think most people are actually going home on saturday yes so. yeah so really tomorrow is the, the really, last really the last, last opportunity yeah. Yeah. yes and and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm making a public commitment right now that i will be on the running buff tomorrow morning despite the fact Excellent. that i've been getting no sleep <laughs> and despite the fact that i have a, an achilles issue right now i'm going to uh, go out and suffer the consequences later but you, um you know uh, paul, paul, paul mckenney is going to be there and yeah. he, he tells you know he's he's he divulged his age to me. I don't know if you'd like me to repeat it on camera. Let's Probably not. not. <laughs> uh, he divulged his age to me and said, as, as, as a consequence, he will run slowly for a little bit and then he'll walk for a bit. And then he'll do a bit more running and then yes. he'll walk for a bit. And if that happens to be your pace, that's cool. And yeah. I mean, maybe we'll all do that pace for chunks of time and some of us will go and do a few sprints right, or, or right. whatever. Honestly, this morning we took it really easy because we were all suffering from Jacob's Ladder <laughs> yesterday. Yes. <laughs> and no, so next year, are you planning to be back for uh, uh, the running buff and the rest of LCA, wherever it happens to be? Um, yeah, I'm, I, I've, I've heard some rumours about where it's going to be, but... Uh, I, You're I, not going to say that on not, camera, though, are we? All no, I know is no. that I think Antarctica is definitely out of the question at this stage. So. Oh, it I've is. Heard, the, the, the Penguins did not make the, uh, the final cut. P Peter was telling us that only Gen 2s would turn up. Um, so, yes. So, yes. Oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, in Carnival Conference, just Gen 2 people. No, no. no. So you haven't answered the question yet. I, I will... <laughs> Intend to? I, I am constantly looking for things to work on that will enable me to submit a paper for LCA yes, that will in, 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 encourage you people to, the fine people on the paper committee to uh, select me again. Well, you know what, we, I, would, we would love to see abstracts from you again because, uh, again, you're a long term uh, supporter of the conference <laughs> and we'd love to have you back. So, Thanks a lot, Michael. Yeah, thank Very you for your time. Oh, thank you. Matthew, thank you thank very you much. James. Great we'll to see be you back again. on the stream in a couple of minutes. We'll try and find somebody else to interview. In the meantime, take care. Bye.